Hey everyone, after speaking about the biology and the communication system of orcas and sociology, of course, we're going to enter more about the world of sounds. We end up the last presentation speaking about the non-manipulative intelligence and of course we have to understand more about this intelligence because it's a totally different kind of intelligence because we don't have the same need, it's not the same intelligence. There is a lot of things we don't know yet. We need more data. So that's why it's important to be in the field, to have more and more contact, more and more observation of these amazing creatures, of this brilliant oceanic civilization. For 20 years, I have been exploring uh, the body language of orcas in order to enter in communication with them. Because according to Merabians, more than the half of the impact of the speaker of the communicator uh, is coming from the body language. Uh, I thought at that time that understanding the elements of the body language of orcas and using these elements of communication was the solution at least to start to be in connection and to understand more what they are and the life. I had this idea and this evening I took my divers in the small boat with a driver. Uh, I took my hydrophone and we stopped the boat in the middle of the fjord and it was pitch dark. And then suddenly we had an amazing northern light uh, coming above and I put the hydrophone and through the speaker we could hear this. Till today, I can feel in my body the effect of the sound we could hear on that moment. Nobody could speak, of course. We were just blown away by the beauty of this sound. We were mesmerized. It was, I had the feeling at that moment that the sounds coming from the depth was a kind of celebration connected to something very high in the sky with the beautiful northern light we had above the head. It was one hour like this. And when we went back to the boat, nobody could speak, of course. We were just like this. <laughs> it was amazing feeling. On that day, I understood that I was wrong. To keep my work, only on the body language of the orcas. I understood that the sound was the key on that day. I went back in France after the season and I still had this in my mind and I thought I have to explore more. What I totally ignore, what is the sound? I have done what everybody would do in my place. I was in the internet and I was looking for what is the sound. And I find this, sound is a wave. So what is a wave? A wave is oscillation with transfer of energy. A wave is defined with a frequency, the period between two waves, and the amplitude is the high of the wave. There is a very special mechanical wave, which is called the stationary wave. Actually, it is the superposition of two waves in opposite condition. And the result of these two opposite waves is a wave, and some places of these waves doesn't move. They are called the nodes. There is one stationary wave we know 
very well because the waves of our oceans, they are stationary waves. The wave of the ocean is not a mass of water moving at the surface. Actually, the mass of water is just going up and down because it is the resultant of two opposite waves. It is a stationary wave. But still, if you put empty bottle at the surface, you will see with the waves, the bottle moving, showing you the transfer of energy. In the 18th century, Ernest Friedrich Klani has the idea to use a metal plate and put sand on the plate and to use a violin bow to make the plate vibrating by the side. The sound vibrating on the plate took some different patterns. What was remarkable is that depending on the frequency he used for the sound, he could observe different pattern. And the pattern is specific of the frequency. We call that the Klanidish's pattern. The plate is vibrating with a stationary wave. So you have belly of this wave depending on the frequency and the belly is moving the plate up and down and there are nodes and in the nodes there is no vibration the plate doesn't move so the sound at the surface at the plate will move from the belly and will accumulate to the nodes this is used also with the voice it's not with the the bow of a violin but um, the clanny plate is connected through an amplifier directly to a microphone and this singer using different frequencies will make the plate vibrating. We can observe the different patterns depending on the frequency and this pattern is moving while the frequency of the voice is moving. A second man living also in Switzerland in the 20th century called Hans Jenny was inspired by the work of Friedrich Kladny. What he could observe is that the sound has an effect on the matter. Uh, it can be liquid, semi-liquid or solid. And this effect is not chaotic at all. This is a perfectly ordered pattern. Recently, Alexander Lauterwasser was also inspired by the Klanny Dishes work. And what he could observe is that all the specific patterns of some frequencies of the Klanny Dishes already exist in the living kingdom in the shape of some organisms. And he had this idea that the shapes of uh, all some organisms are actually coming from some vibration and specific frequencies. Uh, he could correlate some Klanny dishes pattern with some frequency with, for example, a section of a grapefruit or Romanesco or a shell. All these living creatures, all these living shapes are actually the exact copy of a pattern of frequency of Klanny dishes. In this video, called the speaker dish, this team explain how and why the sound has an effect on the matter. In the speaker dish experiment, we taped a petri dish to the speaker, filled it with vodka, and we vibrate the dish with various tones. So the speaker is moving up and down, and that's forming a wave from the edge of the dish towards the center. The camera is taking a picture at exactly the same time as the next wave is about to arrive. And so whatever the frame rate is of your camera, if you play audio through that's the same frequency or a multiple of that frequency, you're going to be able to make the liquid look like it's frozen. Even emotions can be transferred into a speaker dish-like system and they have a specific pattern. A new science has started recently, and this science is called cymatics. The science of sound made visible. This tool, called the cymascope, is to the cymatics what the microscope is to the microscopy. They push the experience uh, in a pool. They have trained this dolphin to echolocate in the divers emerge in the, in, in the pool. And they have recorded with a hydrophone the sound um, of, the, of, of this dolphin. And what they could observe when they put this sound in the cymoscope is this. And this is 
totally amazing. You can recognize the shape of the diver in the semi-glyph. And this is how the orcas and the dolphins, they use the sound to see underwater. Scientists have proved that the dolphins, they had these echolocation systems very early in evolution. Um, they found fossils of dolphins uh, 26 million of years old, and they already had at that time the echolocation system inside the brain. After all this research, personal research, I understood one thing, the sound has an effect on the matter. This is what I kept. And this video reminds me something, this small wave in front of the head of the orcas when the orcas is at the surface. It has to be something making this shape. And in this one, it's even more obvious. It's not possible to have this shape just by moving the head of orcas underwater. They had to use something. They had to use the sound to create this. Exactly like in the video on the cymatics, the water is moving in a really strange way. This is what they are using actually. And they are creating these small waves for this one, for instance. And yes, the orcas, because we are speaking about orcas, they are capable and they know how to use the sound and they know to choose the frequencies, the specific frequencies to create this pattern in the water. After all this research, I had this idea that everything is different in the water. The water is the essence of life. And the image is how we perceive the life, the image by light, but the image is not only light, it's also created by a sound. But the sound is not only a way to see, it's also the creative impulse, such as Alexander Lauterwasser suggests in his theory of the effect of the sound and the resonance on the morphogenesis. Nikola Tesla said that if you want to find the secret of the universe, you have to think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. That makes me think that if we want to find the secrets of the universe, we have to understand the language of orcas, of whales and dolphins, because they already think in terms of vibration, energy and frequency, and since a long time ago. All your experience, all your footage, all your pictures of interaction uh, are helpful. You can contribute and become contributors of our Facebook page called UC Orc Sans Frontières. You can ask for being a UC ambassador and it's going to be a great honor for us to include you in our staff of ambassadors. If you organize some events, seminars, workshops, works about the orca behavior or also the uh, how to come close with orcas, we're going to be uh, really happy to take part of it or any other suggestion you may have. Thank you for your attention, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video. See you in the next one, which will be a total surprise. Bye-bye.